Gallant Old Engine, Part 4, Gallant Old Engine. I'm ashamed of you, Duncan, said Scarloey. You should think of your passengers. Passengers are just nuisances. They're always complaining. Scarloey was shocked. That's no way to talk, he said. Passengers are our coal and water. No passengers means no trains. No trains means no railway. Then we'd be on the scrap heap, my engine, and don't you forget it. Thank goodness Reneus is coming home. Perhaps he'll teach you sense before it's too late. What, what, what has Reneus to do with it? Reneus saved our railway, said Scarloey. Please tell us about it, begged Duncan. I mean, please tell us about it, begged Peter Sam. The year before you came, said the old engine, things were very bad. We were on our last wheels. Mr. Hugh was driver and fireman, while the thin controller was guard. He did everything else, too, and helped Mr. Hugh mend us in the shed. We expect two fresh engines next year, they told us, but we must keep the trains going now. If we don't, our railway will close. How awful, said Peter Sam in sympathy. I tried hard, though I couldn't do much, but Reneus understood. It's my turn now, he said. You've done more than your share of hard work. He was often short of steam, but he always tried to struggle to a station and rest there. That, said Scarloey earnestly, is most important with the passengers. Pshaw! exclaimed Duncan. Passengers, Scarloey continued, don't mind stopping at stations. They can get out and walk about. That's what stations are for, but they get very cross if we stop at wrong places like viaducts. Then they say we're a bad railway and never come back. I remember Reneus stopping in a wrong place once, said Scarloey. He couldn't help it, but he made... But he made up for it afterwards. That afternoon, he had damp rails and a full train. There were passengers even in... There were passengers even in Beatrice, the guard's van. His wheels slipped dreadfully on the steep hill... I mean, on the steep bit after the, fir after the first station, but they gripped at last. The worst's over, he thought. Now we're away. Come along, come along, he sang to the coaches. Come on. Oh, I've got a cramp, he groaned. He stopped, unable to move, on the loneliest part of the line. The thin controller and Mr. Hugh examined him carefully. The passengers watched, I mean, the passengers watched and waited. The passengers watched and waited. Reneus eyed them anxiously. They looked cross. At last, the thin controller stood up. Your valve gear on one side had jammed, he said. We've unfastened the rods and tied them up. Now, Reneus, he went on. We need to reach the next station. Can you pull us there on one cylinder? I'll try, sir, but the next station isn't the right station. Will the passengers be cross? Don't worry, smiled the thin controller. They know we can't reach the top station today. The thin controller sanded the rails. Passengers from Beatrice pushed behind. Mr. Hugh gently eased out the regulator. The train jerked and began behind. Mr. Hugh gently eased, I mean, the train jerked and began to move. I'll do it. I'll do it. Everyone cheered, but Reneus heard nothing. The thin controller is relying on me. If I fail, the railway will close. I mustn't. I mustn't. I'll get there or burst. Everything blurred. He was too tired to move another yard, but he did, and another, and another, and another, till I've got there at last, he sighed with relief. It's proud of you I am indeed, said Mr. Hugh. 
All Reneus remembered about the journey down was having to go on going on. At the big station, the passengers thanked him. We expect a long walk, they said, but you brought us home. We'll come again and bring our friends. You're a gallant little engine, said the thin controller. When you're rested, we'll mend you ready for tomorrow. Was Reneus always ready for tomorrow? Always, smiled Scarloe. Whatever happened, Reneus always pulled his trains. It was Duncan who broke the silence. Thank you for telling us about Reneus, he said. I was wrong. Passengers are important, after all. All the little engines were at the wharf on the day that Reneus came home. Some of the fat controller's engines were there, too. Edward pushed Reneus's truck to the siding, and Scarloe pulled him neatly to his own rails. This was the signal for a chorus of whistles from engines large and small. You never heard such a noise in all your life. The owner, Reneus, and other important people made speeches. The band played, and everyone was very happy. But Reneus was the happiest. But Reneus was happiest of all in his own place that night, next to his friend Scarloe. This helps a little engine to feel, he said, that at last he has really come home. The end.